Good evening, church. It's wonderful to have you tonight as we go through the Bible together. So we, we're so glad that you, you have joined us. We continue from where we left last week. Uh, now we get into chapter two of First Kings. Chapter two of First Kings. Let us pray together before we read God's word. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for the provision of your word. We ask that as we go through it today, as we read it, we pray that your Holy Spirit would uh, help us uh, to understand your heart even as we read this portion of the Bible today um, and help us to really believe in what it says and to act upon it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We get into chapter two, and uh, what we're going to see is the establishment of the king and the kingdom. The establishment of the king and the kingdom. We were introduced to this man called Solomon, who became, you know, his father brought him when he was still very young, and that was because his brother wanted to be king. He had already paraded himself to be the king, that is Adonijah brought a priest for him, for himself, and a prophet for himself. And all that we are gonna see that is gonna calm down. You see, for, for a kingdom to, uh, to be established or um, any important thing to be established, there are things that we, we gotta deal with. There are things that we gotta cut off for other things to, to, to work out according to the plans of God. So let's read together as we see some principles um, and we'll continue. Now the days of David drew near that he should die and he charged Solomon his son saying, I go the way of all the earth, be strong therefore and Prove yourself a man. You know, we, we can talk about those verses for the next few days and many, many days. Um, this charge is very important. We, we're going to look at um, aspects of David that uh, he, he actually hands over to his son to be king, according to God's will. And also we'll see, you know, some things that it feels like there were resentments that he had with other people, and he's gonna tell his son to take care of that business. But before he gets to that place where he will instruct him for that, he's reminding him one thing. They say, I go uh, the way of all the earth, that is the way of death, the way of where we came from. We came from the earth, and that is where we shall return. And so he's saying to Solomon, I go the way of all the earth, be strong therefore, and prove yourself a man. We were kind of talking about this aspect in our men's fellowship, uh, asking ourselves what it really means to be a man. Because you know, you hear these words and all of a sudden what you want to think about is, you know, going to the gym, doing some exercise and just physical fitness for you to 
be renowned as a man. And many men, apparently, would do that so that people will recognize them as men. So pathetic. <laughs> you know, you want to prove yourself to be a man by going to the gym. That is not the reason. It is for physical fitness. Uh, it is good for your health anyways. You should do it if you can. But that is not how you prove yourself to be a man. In verses 3, the Bible says, and keep, prove yourself to be a man. And how do we do that? We are going to see it here. And keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgment, his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn, that the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me, David, saying, if your sons take heed to their ways to walk before me in truth with all their hearts and with all their soul, he said, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. This, this is, the Lord spoke to David very clearly. If you, if your sons and your sons' sons will do this, then you shall not lack a man to be on the throne. And what are those things? These are the things that proves for someone to be a man or for someone to be a real woman. Do you know what they are? To walk in the ways of God, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do, wherever you will go or wherever you will turn. So there it is. You want to be a man with honor? You want to be a woman with honor? These are the things that you ought to do. You ought to fear the Lord, to keep the commandments thereof. That means when David is about to go, there's a reference that is not going with him. He's going to leave it with Solomon. Say, hey, as it is written, in other words, as he's telling his son to be strong, he's saying, you got to study. You got to read. How will you know what is written in the law of Moses if you can't find the time to read it? And it is to read and to obey. You read it and obey. And you know what will happen? You will prosper the rest of your life if you do those things. Isn't it wonderful that it's a promise that you're given and you, this is for sure, this is God's word. That is the charge that is very important is given to his son. Verses five, moreover, you know also that Joab, the son of Zeruiah, what he did to me, and what he did to the two commanders of the armies of Israel, to Abner, uh, the son of Ner, and Amasa, the son of Jether, whom he killed, and he shed the blood of war in peacetime, and put the blood of war on his belt that was around his waist, and on his sandals that were on his feet. Therefore, do according to your wisdom and do not let his gray hair go down to the grave in peace. Now he's, he's given him a very important charge to, to honor the Lord, to follow the Lord, that he should prosper. But again, for the kingdom to prosper, for the kingdom to be fully established, there are things that have to be cut out or there are things that must be considered. 
You guys know Joab. Job is, you know, he's been with David for quite a long time. And his relationship with David has been up and down, up and down, up and down. And David, in his old age, when he's about to die, he knows for sure that if Joab will be king, or not king, um, he will be the chief of the commanders of the army, they're going to be trouble. They can overthrow this young man. They can do whatever things that are evil. And so his dad already is employing to Solomon saying, I know you are wise. <laughs> I know you're going to do the right thing. Why? Because maybe of his relationship with him, but because of the charge of God's word. Because if you follow this, you're going to be wise. It doesn't matter how old you are. A teenager, a young adult, an old man and woman, if you follow this Bible, follow these words, you're going to prosper. So he's telling him about someone who shed innocent blood when people were not at war, but he shed blood. He say, be aware of such people. Therefore, according to your wisdom, do not let his gray hair go down to the grave in peace, but show kindness to the son of Basilai. You guys remember Basilai? That was the old man who came to David in the middle of nowhere. He brought him supplies, a lot of food. He fed David and he really helped him. And he says his sons should be rewarded with kindness. This is the Gileadite. He, and let them be among those who eat at your table. For they came to me when I fled from Absalom, your brother. And see that you have with you Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamite from Bahurim, who cast me with a malicious curse in the day when I went to Mah Mahanaim. But he came down to meet me at the Jordan, and I swore to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put you to death with the sword. Now, therefore, do not hold him guiltless, for you are a wise man. And now, and know what you ought to do to him, but bring his gray hair down to the grave with blood. His father has to warn him about these particular people. Joab and um, Shimei. You remember that guy who was casting David and kicking the dust and calling David a bloodthirsty person? He say, but after we returned, he came and begged for mercy. But I say I would not kill him. But those are the people that you're going to be watchful for. Don't let it go down in peace. Don't, in other words, he's saying, don't let them fool you, because they can. You know how people would, you know, they, they have wronged you, and all of a sudden, they're so nice. You're like, uh-uh. This niceness of this person is, <laughs> there's nothing they're scheming for. And they don't want uh, this young man to be taken advantage of. He's already the king. And he say, according to your wisdom, do what is right. So David rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. And the period that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. Seven years he reigned in Hebron. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 33 years. Then Solomon. But before we get to Solomon, this is, I was reading and this is, it popped out for me. These two verses. Verses 10 and verses 11. David is 70 years old. is about to die. David has done so many great things. We know he's, 
shortcomings and the great things that the Lord has uh, helped him to accomplish. But let us be reminded of this, that however much you were great, only the story of God continues. Yours is just that little. <laughs> Imagine what David has done all his life. All we see here is two verses about his death. We're done. <laughs> so whatever you guys would do, whatever greatness you will gain from this earth, people will say a few words and that's it. <laughs> You're gone to the way of all the earth. <laughs> Pema Peponi is waiting for all of us. <laughs> Only two. So David rested with his fathers. Your story doesn't matter as much as the story of God. The story of God continues. People will come, great, small, mighty, they're gone. Saul was the king, he's gone. David is now dead, he's gone. There's another person. And also this is to tell you that everybody of you, you are replaceable. <laughs> in your job that you're so holding so tight, my friend, you can be replaced in a minute. You can. Don't hold it so tight. Then Solomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his kingdom was firmly established. We're going to see that statement at the end. We'll come back to it. Now Adonijah, the son of Haggith, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. So, he, so she said, do you come peaceably? And he said, peaceably, yes. Moreover, he said, I have something to say to you. And she said, say it. Then he said, you know that the kingdom was mine. And all Israel had set their expectation on me that I should reign. However, the kingdom has been turned over and has been given to my brother. For it was He's from the Lord. <laughs> you know that this belonged to me. And all Israel, I mean, we are not told that Israel was really waiting, but he was the one rallying people towards himself. But he said, all Israel were waiting for me to be king. And that one has been taken over. Why? Because the Lord has given it to someone else. Shouldn't that be an encouraging thing to know? That someone wants something so bad and they know that they don't deserve it because God himself has set aside that portion for you. <laughs> Instead of being happy for these people, this man was not happy. He was not happy at all. Now, I ask one petition of you. Do not deny me. And she said to him, say it. Then he said, please speak to King Solomon. Now he's addressing him as king. For he will not refuse you, that he may give me Abishag, the Shunammite, as wife. You guys remember that woman? That was the young woman that was brought by the council of elders. <laughs> they decided David is old and no amount of blankets is keeping him warm. So bring him a young woman. And the Bible told us that uh, apart from keeping David warm, nothing ever happened. But she remained to be uh, one of David's concubine. She remained to be. 
This is the lady or the woman that um, this guy Adonijah is asking that he should have. You guys remember when Absalom wanted to take over, he was advised by some wicked people to go take his father's concubine and be with them. And you know that means the, that now the person who is doing that is having authority as much as the person who brought them to be his concubine. In other words, it is a symbol of authority when you take the former concubine or the former wife of the king to be yours. In other words, you're saying, I am in charge. I'm ruling. (laughs) And you say, hey, I want her to be my wife. So Bathsheba said, very well, I will speak for you to the king. So Bathsheba therefore went to the king Solomon to speak to him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet her and bowed down to her and sat down on his throne and had a throne set for the king's mother so that she sat on the right hand. You know, this is now the first time we are hearing that the mother of a king has sat on his right hand, closer to him. Um, And perhaps there was a very good relationship that there was a set um, throne for Bathsheba there as the mother of the king. And Solomon went and bowed and welcomed her, his mother, to the throne. Then she said... I desire one small petition of you. Do not refuse me. And the king said to her, Ask it, my mother, for I will not refuse you. So she said, Let Abishag, the Shunammite, be given to Adonijah, your brother, as wife. I don't know if she ever gave this uh, aspect any thought. And the king Solomon answered and said to his mother, Now why do you ask Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Ask for him the kingdom also, for he is my older brother. For him, for Abiathar the priest, and Joab the son of Zerir. It's like whatever you have asked, I know what it means exactly. In other words, if we give this woman to him, we are giving him to be in charge of this kingdom and he's not the king. In other words, you're telling me to surrender the kingdom to Abishag. He's still very young, but you can see the wisdom in it. You say, if you, 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 you have asked something very small, you would have asked even the kingdom. And who are going to be there? Abishag. Who is going to be there? A Joab. And Abiathar is going to be there as the priest. These guys are going to be there. So if we are to give one, we're going to give all, not one. This is remarkable for this young king. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, saying, May God do so to me, and more also, if Adonijah has not spoken this word against his own life. Now therefore, as the Lord lives, who has confirmed me and set me on the throne of David my father, and who has established a house for me as he promised Adonijah shall be put to death today. Wow. 
I like even the tone already. I like the wisdom already. I like the sternness even against his own mother. Because that is the hardest thing for a lot of you people to do. That when your parents say something, it doesn't matter what it is, we're going to follow suit. Listen, we are told in the Bible here to honor our father and mothers in the Lord. <laughs> we have parameters around it in the Lord. If they will give you counsel that is apart from the Lord, you know what you ought to do? You ought to run away from it. Say, yes, I love you. Yes, I care about you, but I'm not going to do that. Because the Lord will not be pleased with that decision. As surely as the Lord lives, this man is going to die today. Because if he continues to live, he's going to be the number one problem that we're going to have to deal with. So you say he's talking about the establishment of the, the throne here and what God has. He actually said that uh, the Lord has confirmed him as the king. Say he must die. He's gonna die today. So King Solomon sent by the hand of Beniah. You guys also remember Beniah, one of David's mighty men. This was the guy who would tell David, hey, this guy is mocking you and cursing you, just give me a minute and I'll bring his head. He was a guy who was always ready to defend the king. Now, he's the man who is the right-hand man of the king. He's a loyal man. He's a loyal man. I mean, uh, around the territory of your kingdom, do you have loyal people? Loyalty speaks great volumes when you have people you can trust, when you have people that even in your absentia, they can speak for you. They can defend you even when you're not there. It's a remarkable trait. So he sent Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and he stuck him down and he died. You, Solomon just began reigning and he's kusema na kutenda. We say it, we do it. We say you're going to die, you're going to die. Don't, don't, don't procrastinate. If you say you're going to do it, do it. You have given it thought. You have known that the Lord has um, led you to go that direction. There's something specific in your life that God is saying, hey, you gotta kill it. You gotta bury it. Then that is exactly what you ought to do. Otherwise, if you don't kill it, these things, they have tendencies of coming back again and when they show up, they show up in a nice suit, nice dress, lip gloss, a nice haircut, and they'll deceive you. Be careful. And Abiata, the priest, the king said, go to Anathoth, to your own field, for you are deserving of death, but I will not put you to death at this time, because you carry the ark of the, God, of the Lord God before my father David, and because you were afflicted, every time my father was afflicted. So Solomon removed Abiathar from being a priest to the Lord that he might fulfill the word of the Lord which he spoke concerning the house of Eli at Shiloh. Do you guys remember when we studied that? The, the sons of Eli began doing wicked things in the... Uh, the, the temple in, in the synagogues and the Lord swore that you know his 
uh, children and his descendants. They will not be priests forever. It will be cut. And this is happening here when Solomon got into power and the scripture is being fulfilled. So always it's good to, you know, to read the scripture. You will, you will get the trail of thought that God is fulfilling these things on the way as we go. If he said that this lineage is going to be cut off, surely it's going to be cut off. He said to David, if your sons and your children's children will heed to my word, you will not lack anyone to be on the throne. The moment people will run away from it, the throne will, you know, will, it will be divided and other people will take over and it will not be a lasting kingdom. But now this is fulfilled what was said at Shiloh to Eli. The news came to Joab. For Joab had defected to Adonijah. He had joined Adonijah. Though he had not defected to Absalom when Absalom wanted to overthrow his father. So Job fled to the tabernacle of the Lord and took hold of the horns of the altar. We talked about it last week when people would uh, have situations, they would run to the, to the altar and hold the horns of the, uh, of the altar so that they would be uh, given mercy so that uh, the priests and if there was a wrongdoing, perhaps they'll be forgiven of it. And now, because he's already seen what has been done to Adonijah, he said, who's next? It's me. So he ran without being told to run away. You guys have read somewhere in the Proverbs that the wicked would run without a cause, <laughs> running without people chasing after them. You know what is chasing them? The things they did. And he's running to the altar, holding the horns. And King Solomon was told that Job has fled to the tabernacle of the Lord. There he is by the altar. Then Solomon sent Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, saying, go strike him down. <laughs> go kill him. So Beniah went to the tabernacle of the Lord and said to him, thus says the king, come out. And he said, no, but I will die here. And Beniah brought back word to the king, saying, Thus say Joab, and thus he answered me. Then the king said to him, Do as he has said. <laughs> what did he say? I will die here, holding the horn of the altar. The king said, Go do as he said. Go kill him right there. and strike him down and bury him that you may take away from me and the house of my father the innocent blood which Joab shed. So the Lord will return his blood on his head because he struck down two men more righteous and better than he and killed them with the sword. Abner the son of Nar the commander of the army of Israel, and Amasa, the son of Jether, the commander of the army of Judah, though my father David did not know it. Their blood shall therefore return upon the head of Joab and upon the head of his descendants forever. But upon David and his descendants, upon his house and his throne, there shall be peace forever from the Lord. So Beniah the son of Jehoiada went up and struck and killed him and buried him in his own house in the wilderness. The king put Beniah 
the son of Jehoiada in place over the army. And the king put Zadok, the priest, in place of Abiathar. You know, he was so gracious to Abiathar. He said, I'm not going to kill you, but Rudy Gishagi, <laughs> Rudy Rizaf, go back to the village. I'm not going to kill you right now. Um, I don't know what will happen in the future, <laughs> but you, you served with my father. You did well. When my father was afflicted, you were there. But now this has to be fulfilled. Scripture also has to be fulfilled. He was the last man from the lineage of Eli. And now that lineage is cut off. We have another man, Zadok. Then the king sent and called for Shimei. You remember Shimei, the one who cast David and was kicking dust. And said to him, build yourself a house in Jerusalem and dwell there and do not go out from there. For it shall be that day when you go out and cross the brook Kidron, know for certain that you shall die. Your blood shall be on your own head. And she may say to the king, the saying is good. As my Lord the king has said, so your servant will do so. So she may dwell in Jerusalem many days. Now it happened at the end of three years that two slaves of Shimei ran away to Akish, the son of Makan, king of Gad. This is the land of the Philistine. And they told Shimei, saying, Look, your slaves are in Gad. So Shimei rose and saddled his donkey and went to Akish of Gath to seek his slaves. And Shimei went and brought his slaves from Gath. And Solomon was told that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and had come back. Then the king sent and called for Shimei and said to him, Did I not make you swear by the Lord? And warn you, saying, Know for certain that on the day you go out, surely you shall die. And you say to me, the word that you say to me, the word I have heard is good. Why then have you not kept the oath of the Lord and the commandment that I gave you? The king said, Moreover to Shimei. You know, as your heart acknowledges, all the wickedness that you did to my father, David. Therefore, the Lord will return your wickedness on your own head. <laughs> those, those people that David mentioned to Solomon, he's taking care of them one after the other. And he knows that this, this guy was not a very straightforward man. He will say yes today and go ahead and do something else the next time. He's not a trusted fella, Shimei or Shimei. You cannot trust such people who come with very nice faces, straight faces, say they acknowledge what you have said to them, say they have repented, say they will do word for word for what you have said for it is pleasing to their souls. And as soon as you have let them go and they're comfortable, they go ahead and do the exact thing you told them not to do. So this was a test and he failed. He failed this test. But King Solomon, uh, 44, the king said, moreover to Shema, you know, as your heart acknowledges, all the wickedness, <laughs> the things you did to my father, David, therefore the Lord will return 
your wickedness on your own head, but King Solomon shall be blessed. And the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. In other words, in short, if the kingdom has to be established, all the people or the enemies of the kingdom, they have to be cut down. And David already knew the enemies and he pointed them out. You deal with these people. David did not actually, you know, tell his son that tell uh, these old men to go and build himself a house in Jerusalem and all this instruction. No, it is Solomon who came out with all these things. Because he had said, do according to your wisdom, for you are a wise king. You are a wise man. You're going to do right. Um, and Solomon did that without fail. But he said, because this blood was not on David, therefore, King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. As he's speaking about this, this is also a prophecy that remains, that this kingdom will be established forever. Why? Because as we, you know, trans to the New Testament, our Lord Jesus is called the root of David, son of David, meaning the kingdom from him will be forever and ever. Every, the government will be upon his shoulder. He'll be the, uh, the, the, the prince of peace, the king of kings. The kingdom shall be established forever. So the king commanded Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and he went out and struck him down, and he died. Thus the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. Why? Because he was weeding these things that would have brought a lot of destruction to him. That would, would have been a constant fight. Joab was already a prominent person, already known. You know, Abiathar was a priest. And... Uh, uh, Solomon's brother, Adonijah, was going to cause a lot of trouble. He's the elder brother. I mean, you leave these people, and Solomon is trying to lead people here, that was going to be a disaster. It was going to be a trouble. And friends, as we see the scriptures, if you see things in your life and the Lord is telling you to cut them, do not entertain them. Do not entertain them. Do not entertain small, small lies because they're going to become so big. You're going to, you know, the worst thing about lies is if you lie today, you have to keep on remembering word for word what you lied for so that you don't mix it up. That is hard work already. Who wants to do that? Today you're saying this and tomorrow you... So you have the same concept, but you've forgotten how you worded it. It's going to cause a lot of trouble. I don't want to do that. Just say the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Being a disciple of the truth will set your lives free. Is it lies? Is it the life of adultery? Is it a life of just not doing what is right? What is it? At times, the Lord would point those things to us. And you know, if, if we be honest with ourselves, we'll know for sure that he has said it. We'll know for sure that God has said it. Maybe he used your friend to mention that. Maybe you're just going about your business. You heard a preacher preaching it. You're like, no, that's not for me. I'm not even a member of that church anyways. <laughs> God will speak to you in whichever way. 
If you see people now going down the drain, know for sure that the Lord had already warned them. They just turned their deaf ears on the Lord. Please, church, do not turn your ears on the Lord. If you cross a place of, uh, of safety, as this man Shimei had crossed Kidron, this valley, this brook, it was, for, 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 for the Hebrew people, there were places you, you don't cross. If you cross, you're a gone deal. You're gonna die or some things are gonna happen, you're gonna be disowned, so just don't cross it. And this man was told, hey, don't cross over and go. And because they thought he, he's wise, and three years actually has gone by. Three years. It's like, nani anakumbuka vitu kama yu? Three years. But when the king was told, he said, bring him. Did we not swear before the Lord? <laughs> and you said, these words are good. And now you have turned back, doing your own things, Oh, let me remind you, you are so troublesome to my father. <laughs> the first time he was talking to him, he never said, you know, you, you are a troublesome guy. He kept it at heart, but he was testing him. And then he failed the test. Sometimes sin would cause us to behave like children. You tell them things, this one minute, the next minute, roundabout, and they do the exact thing you told them not to do. My daughter has a tendency of you tell her not to do something and then she goes around and like, why are you doing what we told you not to do? But I'm just doing it just kidogo. <laughs> Just a little, just a little. And then you're like, okay, it's, it's, we're done. You're supposed to go this, you're going to Oga, you're going to go to the house, playtime is over. Like, but just let me play for two minutes. Her two minutes is the whole day, okay? It's just two minutes. Just go back and do the same thing. Don't do this. They just go back and just come to the very exact thing. Swallow your food. You bring kiboko, you give them one, and then they, they cry as they eat, and then as soon as you leave the table, children are just trouble. <laughs> They're a blessing. But they will, they will teach you a lot of things. You know what they teach us? how we behave before our Heavenly Father. <laughs> that he tells us things and we go around and do the exact same things he said we shouldn't. Because of why? We know our Father is merciful. He ain't gonna kill us. <laughs> but you know what? Sin brings about death. Sin brings about death. Let's not entertain anything that would uh, cause us to cross the lines and do the things that will only be pleasant to our bodies but not pleasing God. The things that the Lord has mentioned to you, I believe he has, take care of them. Cut them down. Don't be so mindful of what people will say. But what about my friends? But they know about this, they know this, 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 this. You care about your friends, you care about the Lord. The days of the Lord are at hand. We do not know when, we just know it can be now, the next few minutes, tomorrow, we don't know. All we know is that he's, he's warned us enough. And he wants us to be established in him so that we are not moved. When your foundation is shaken, where are you going to run to? When the enemy will come upon you like a flood, who's going to save you? Learn 
to trust in Jesus. Trust and obey. For there is no other way better than just to trust and obey. You want to prove yourself to be a man, to be a woman of God? Follow as it is written in the law of God. In the former days, it was written in the scrolls. Today, it should be written in our hearts so that you would meditate upon it day and day. Night. Let us pray together. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the privilege of gathering together, the privilege of hearing your word, and these principles that we learn every week. We pray that it will not just be a cliche that uh, we came in a different way, we go in a different way. I pray that there will be truth to that word that we are not leaving this place the same way we came. I pray that your Holy Spirit will be at work in us even as we continue to meditate upon your word. So we pray that you bless our, our time as we continue in fellowship, as we disperse to our various homes, that you keep us safe and sound even from the rope drivers on the road that will be safe, God. And um, we pray that your presence will be with us even in our homes, at our workplaces, at our schools, whatever place we find ourselves in, that will be the light of this world. So bless our time in your presence, we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you, church. Thank you for coming and see you on Sunday, if the Lord wills.